Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're gonna be solving a Physics 7B Torque practice problem, Robert the Carpenter. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please leave a like and subscribe, it helps our channel a lot. Feel free to pause the video in order to copy the uh, problem statement so that you can follow along. The problem goes as follows. So there is basically a diagram that this problem is giving us, uh, which is a five meter rod and it's supported by a pivot three meters from its end. And then Robert, the carpenter, pushes the rod at a 36.87 angle on the left with a force of 5 mg. For this whole problem, the rod is completely stationary. So we have to answer a, uh, so a bunch of questions. So what direction is the torque exerted by Robert? And then, so let's just go ahead and start with that. Then I guess I'll just read the questions as I follow along. Again, feel free to pause the video. Um, if that's necessary. So as you can see, I have everything written down here on my notes. So I have the diagram and I have force by rod. I do have the distances over here. Now something that I always do, and you might have catch on to this, but it's gonna be really important on this problem, is that whenever I do units, I put brackets around my units. And this is something that I just like doing because uh, I don't know, it's just neat, it looks it looks good to me, It's it helps me out. But the reason why it's gonna be super important in this problem, it's because Rob is exerting a, fo a problem, a, a force, I'm sorry, of five mg, and there's an m here, but this m is just part of the force by Robert, it is not actually meters. Now this m is just the mass of the rod, which they decided to just leave as m, uh, so just be mindful that whenever I'm bracketing an M, that's going to mean meters. And if the M is just there by itself, or just, you know, in this case, it's just 5 mg, this M doesn't have a bracket, so it's just the um, mass of the rod. So anyways, let's just get started. So the first thing is, what direction is the torque exerted by Robert? How do you know? Well, part A is just, we have to use our right hand rule. So the torque that Robert is exerting, remember, we want to use our right hand rule. Um, there are several ways in which you might have learned how to use your right hand rule. The way in which I do it is I put my fingers on R and I twirl towards F, which in this case, this would give me a um, torque going into the blackboard. So, well, into the blackboard, I'm sorry, into the page. I'm too used to doing this problem in the blackboard. So this would be into the page. Um, and then how do you know, then just write and rule. There are several ways in which you can um, figure this out. The other way in which I know people figure this out is um, you basically ignore every single other force that's acting on your bar. And then if this is the only force, literally the only force acting on your problem and this starts spinning, in which direction would it start spinning? So you would answer, well, it would start spinning on this direction. So then you basically twirl your fingers on that direction and then your thumb is gonna be the direction of the torque. So that is another method in which a lot of people just use it. I, I personally use both of them. Uh, but yeah, those are the two methods, but uh, regardless of what method of you use, you should use some sort of, uh, you know, right hand rule method in order to figure out that it goes into the page. So now part B of this problem is um, you exert a force at point A only in the vertical direction and prevent the rod from rotating. Figure out the direction and magnitude of the force you exert. So basically you are here at A and you are exerting a vertical force, uh, please be aware that they are not saying whether if it's up or down, so we have to figure that out. It could be completely vertical looking up or completely vertical looking down. And we have to figure out the direction, uh, up or down, and the magnitude of the force we exert. Now, for this entire problem, uh, this bar right here is not moving in space and it's also not rotating. If it's not moving in space, that means that our net force is equal to zero. 
And if it's not rotating around this axis or around any pivot point, that means that our network is equal to zero. So let's just go ahead and use this equation and let's just make this into an equation. Now, uh, the, the, uh, so we, we just have to use this. And the other thing that we have to figure out is how many forces do we have here and how many of these forces are generating a torque. So let's just go ahead and do that first, actually. So besides this force by Rob and this force by you, we do have another force, which is the force of gravity. So gravity is exerting a force over here at the center of the bar. And force by gravity is just mass times gravity. So this is just mg because they told us to just leave the mass as m and then g is just 10. So I guess we can just say this is 10 M. Now, um, we have this force, we have a force going down, we have some force up and down here, and we should also have a pivot force. However, I'm not gonna draw it because it doesn't make sense to draw it until I figure out whether this is up or down. So I'm just gonna leave this at the moment, but there is a force acting on the pivot point. Um, and, I'm, and it's, um, how do I know that? Well, I know that because this is going strictly down, this is going strictly up and down, but this has a little bit of an X component. So you can't make the argument that maybe there isn't a force here. There has to be a force here, even if it's just on the X component to cancel out this X component. So that is uh, basically how I can argue that even though I don't know its magnitude and its direction just yet, there must be a, a force at the pivot point, otherwise it just wouldn't add up to zero. Okay, so let's just go ahead and balance our torques. So the net torque being equal to zero basically means that your torque's going into the page and your torque's going out of the page. Have to cancel out. Now, what are the torques that we have going into the page? Well, uh, so out of these three, well, we only have two torques that we can figure out for sure. This one is going into the page. The, uh, we know this because of part A, if you use the right hand rule. So let's just go ahead and figure out this number. So torque is equal to um, RF sine of the angle. So in this case, R is equal to two meters. F is equal to five mg's. And then this is sine of 36.87. So our torque going into the page is going to be equal to um, two times five times sine of 36.87. So this is six MGs going into the page. Um, so now the torque's going out of the page. The only torque that is going out of the page at the moment. Oh no, wait. So this torque is going into the page and then it so happens that this torque is also going into the page when you think about it because if you use the right hand rule oh yeah this is going into the page so let's see um okay so what are we gonna do okay so let's just call this the torque by rob and then let's just go ahead and figure out the torque by gravity. So the torque by gravity is just RF sine of the angle. So R is equal to, we need this distance over here. So if the entire thing is five meters, then this has to be um, 2.5 meters. And if this is three meters, then this is 0 0.5 meters. So R is equal to 0 0.5 meters, F is equal to 10, um, 
Well, let's just leave it as mg actually so that it cancels out nicely. So this is equal to 0 0.5 mg's. Newton's meters going into the page. So now we have two things going into the page. So the only thing uh, that makes sense in this situation, because you have two ins, that would be that this guy has to generate a torque going out of the page. Because if you have two things going into the page, but no things out of the page, then you just can't cancel them out. So this means that uh, this torque out of the page, which is also the only torque left, which is your torque um, due to the torque at point 8, that just has to be equal to 6.5 mg's newtons meters going in. Okay, so this is the torque that you are exerting, but we have to figure out the magnitude of the force. So this torque, so 6.5 mg's, torque is also RF sine of an angle, so this is equal to um, R, which is the distance from the pivot point to point A, which is equal to 3. F is the force by A, which is the thing that we're looking for. And then the sine of the angle, well, I'm just going to write it even though it doesn't matter. Sine of 90 is equal to 1. So force by A is equal to 6.5 divided by 3. Uh, 6.5 divided by 3, that is going to be equal to 2.16 newtons in magnitude, and we need a direction. So we know, because we balance out our torques, that the torque generated by this force has to be out of the page. So do we need a force going up or down? Well, if the force is going down, that is going to generate a torque going into the page. And because we need a torque going out of the page, then the torque uh, actually needs a force going up. So this is actually a force going up. And this is uh, going up, final answer. There we go. Okay, so that is part B of the problem. So let's just go ahead and see what part C is. Uh, figure out the force exerted by the pivot so that the whole rod does not accelerate, nor does it have an angular acceleration. <coughs> okay, so for part C, what we're gonna do is, for part B, we use this information. So what we're gonna do for part C is, well, we have to figure out the force at the pivot, so we know one, two, three out of four forces, so we can actually just balance our forces. Now, in order to, balancing our forces means that our net force has to be equal to zero. And in this case, we have, uh, one of the forces has an X and a Y component, which means that when I'm adding my forces, I need to add the X and the Y components. So the first thing that I have to do is um, split up my forces into X and Y. So force by Rov, uh, oh god, I changed his name, Rov, is equal, in terms of X and Y component, we know Sokatoa, so we know that the X component is 5mg uh, cosine of 36.87, and we know that the Y component is equal to 5mg sine of 36.87. So let's just go ahead and write that down. Oh, and also this is 2.16 mg's. I forgot to divide that, huh? All right. So five cosine of 36.87, five cosine of 36.87 is equal to 3.99 Y component, oh, MG. I keep forgetting the MG. This is why this problem is so annoying. All right, so five sine 
of 36.87 is equal to 3 mg's. Now force by gravity, it's all on the y component, so that is going to be 0 here, and then negative, because it's going down, negative uh, mg. And then force by at point 8 is also all on the y component, so this is 0 and this is positive uh, 2.16 um, mg. And then force by pivot, we don't know what this is, so I'm just going to leave it like this, but we do know that the net force, which is if you add them all, we, uh, it has to add up to 0. So at this point the problem is set, and we just have to figure out what goes here so that this plus this plus this plus this is equal to zero, and then what goes here so that this plus this plus this plus this is equal to zero. For the x-axis it's actually very easy because we have uh, 3.9 plus zero uh, plus zero, so that's just um, negative 3.99 mg. Now for the uh, y component is 3 minus 1 plus 2.16 plus what is equal to 0? Well, let's just see. So 3 minus 1 plus 2.16, uh, that is equal to negative 4.16 mg's, so that everything adds up to 0. So this is going to be our final answer to this problem. Force by pivot is uh, negative 3.99 mg, negative 4.16. And now part uh, 4 for this quiz is draw an ex a complete extended force diagram. Now what does complete mean? A complete extended force diagram has uh, both forces and uh, distances from the pivot point to those forces. So this is almost complete. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and add that force by A is 2.16. 16 mg's. So the only thing that I'm missing in order to have a final answer is just putting this arrow over here. So this arrow is negative negative. This means a little bit to the west. This means a little bit south. So this is just going to be um, some arrow going a little bit west, a little bit south. And this is final answer. So this is force by pivot. I guess we can figure out a magnitude because, you know, why not? This is not a place. We can just go ahead and make this as pretty as we want. Plus 4.16 um, squared. Um, give me the square root. 5.76 mg's. So there we go. So this is a complete force diagram. So this basically completes this quiz. So I hope that you guys found this content helpful, leave a like if you did, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye!